Irreconcilable differences? Killed on your wedding night. Even for Vegas, that's a quickie marriage. Well, it's like the priest says, Till death do you part. This that new hotshot they hired to replace you? Hotshot? Yeah. Replace me? <laughs> Come on. Nick Stokes. Glad to get a chance to work with you. Well, I'll leave you to it. Well, if you're as good as they say, you probably already noticed our blushing bride here. Yeah, the autopsy will tell us more. Just let Doc Robbins know when you're gonna want the body brought down to the morgue. She's just Jane Doe for now. I didn't find a purse, an ID, or any luggage in the room. We could be looking at the trifecta. Kidnapping, robbery, and murder. So, right now we need to find out who this girl is. Because if this is a crime of passion, then our victim knew her killer. Well, judging by the murder weapon and those cuts across her face and neck, my money's on a crime of passion. The groom's missing. That might be a lethal case of cold feet, or maybe a jealous ex-boyfriend. And if that's the case, somewhere, our groom might be a second victim. Not specifically. Let's get back to it. Hey, do me a favor, will you? Could you finish up the interview with our witness over there? Then you can help me finish processing the scene. It's a busy night. We're shorthanded. Oh, and Jim left us a copy of the 911 call. It might be worth a listen. Yeah, uh, Charles Steer. I'm the night manager. Sorry if I'm a little freaked out. This, this is a first for me. Okay, okay. Uh, th that was just after checkout time, ar ar around 11. I, I came by to see if he'd left so that the maid could come in here and clean up. I, I knocked a couple times, no answer. I, 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 opened, the, I opened the door and uh, when I saw her, I, I, I called you guys right away. Uh, yeah, right. He's some Mexican dude. I, I never seen him before. Short guy, you know, about five six or so. He, he checked in by himself, but I figured he, he might have had some company waiting around the corner because he asked for the Cupid suite, you know? You know, I kind of went all through this with that Captain Brass guy earlier. But anyway, Ombre paid with cash. He gave a phony name like Michael Jordan or George Lopez or something. You know, most guys do. No. <laughs> you kidding me? The owner, she don't trust nobody who works here. Cash goes straight into the drop safe. Do not pass go, you know what I mean? She picks it up first thing in the morning. She takes it straight to the bank as soon as it opens. Nah. See, I, I kind of make my own rules on the night shift. I just write down the name, take the cash, or run the card. I mean, it's not like I get paid enough to pay attention, you know what I'm saying? No, man. I've I never seen her before. Could you let me know if you find out? Because I, I kind of like to know. That is, I mean, if you're allowed to give out that sort of information at all? No, not at all. I mean, it was it was a pretty quiet night. Unusually quiet, you know what I mean? And if anybody was screaming or fighting or anything in here, I mean, nobody said a word to me about it. Oh, I, I can't think of anything else to tell you, man. It's It's just a messed up world we're living in, that's for sure. There's some kind of glass or plastic lodged in her neck. Could be the COD, but we'll need Doc Robbins to make that call. We'll want a closer look at it after he takes it out. With any luck, our victim's DNA will be in CODIS, and we'll find out who she is. From the distribution of this blood, it looks like she was standing when she was attacked, then she fell onto the bed. Hey, you see how that cushion on the couch was put on backwards? Check it out. Blood could be from either our perp or our victim. All we know is, somebody didn't want us to see it.
Great job. Pays to be thorough. I'll call Doc Robbins down in the morgue and have him send someone out for the body. I see you two are making a great team already. Crime scene process that fast, huh? Our new transfer here moves pretty quick. I just stand back and watch the magic happen. Well, don't stand around too much. You still need to identify that Jane Doe before you can make much headway. We're on it. Our Vic's DNA isn't in the system. She's still a Jane Doe. Blood from the couch cushion is not a match to our Jane Doe, and someone tried to clean it up. So, if we go with our crime of passion theory, our victim struggles with the assailant, but she gets a piece of him. And obviously, he doesn't want to be identified, so as best he can, he cleans up after himself. Hi, I don't believe I've had the pleasure. I'm Al Robbins. It's nice to meet you. No, in fact, the marriage was not consummated at all, consensually or otherwise. Well, at least not last night. Have you met Henry Andrews in Tox yet? Very nice fellow. You'll like him. Well, anyway, according to the Tox panel, your victim's blood alcohol level was .09. She was definitely inebriated. But even if she held her liquor well, I would imagine there had to be some kind of complication with the 1.9 milligrams per liter of benzoyl methyl econine in her system. Still, that could be considered by some to be a fairly recreational level of cocaine ingestion. I'd say your victim's been dead about eight to nine hours, which I suppose would put the murder at around three in the morning. A broken heart. Seriously. I removed a shard of broken glass from what looks like it could be a heart-shaped plate or ashtray. It severed the victim's carotid artery, which led to her cause of death being technically exsanguination. But where's the poetry in that? The shard is right over... Oh, here you go. Yes, I have them right here for you. Well, I haven't completed my examination, so I might find out something else. Please feel free to poke around some more now, or you can come back anytime. Good catch. Your victim wore a removable partial denture. It's pretty nice bridge work, actually. 
But you ask me, this girl's too young to be losing her teeth. My experience tells me she's probably been the victim of domestic violence. What if we try zooming in, or out? We can't see what we're looking for at this magnification. Let's try another setting. Nice work! Those ID markers are often better than driver's licenses. Now all we have to do is look it up in the medical database. Jackpot! Says here our corpse bride's real name is Lynn Bowder, and she isn't a newlywed at all. She's been married for over a year to a first lieutenant in the Marine Corps. Yeah, but get this, under spouse's employee contact information, Lynn lists a military FPO address, a fleet post office box. It's good for another two months, which means her husband's still deployed overseas. Which begs the question, if Lynn's husband is out of the country, then who's she honeymooning with? I got you some more information on Lynn Bowder. She's a Vegas native, but moved out to North Carolina a couple of years ago after getting married. Six months ago, her husband, along with the Second Marine Expeditionary Force, was redeployed to Iraq. Now, as far as I can tell, the two remain happily married. There's no record of divorce either here or in North Carolina. No new marriage license was issued to Lynn Bowder. None of the local chapels has any record of her walking or running down the aisle, and none of the hotels has any record of her having checked in. Got a last known local address? No, but her last local place of employment was Pleasure City, a strip club about two blocks away from Aurelia's fantasy suites. We should check it out. We? <laughs> Call me if you need backup. Will do. Hey, 
Sorry, we're closed. Ma'am, we're here from the Vegas Crime Lab. We're here following up on a murder investigation. Kathy, Kathy Bird, you said murder. Who got murdered? Lynn Bowder? Yeah, why? I'm afraid she was found dead at Aurelia's Fantasy Suites. Oh my god! I, I just saw her last night! <laughs> yeah, guy last night got a little grabby. Security bounced him. He's lucky that's all they did. Hurt like a son of a bitch. Yes, it was. We were both working. She spent most of her time dancing for this one guy. Well, I didn't get a real good look at him because the club was busy and it was dark as hell and I was working. I think he was Mexican, though. Not real tall. And she was, like, grinding all over the guy. I mean, he must have had some serious cash on him. Like I said, I can't remember exactly, but I think she was in that chair over there. The one turned away from the stage. She liked to have room to dance. Wow. I'm going to guess midnight? They left together sometime around midnight, but I'm not 100% on that. Not real well. I mean, you know, she used to work here a few years ago. We used to hang out some, but then she got married to a real loser and left town. Anyway, I didn't hear from her until two weeks ago. She called and came by the club. You know, she said she wanted to work the pole here for a few nights, make a little quick and dirty cash. Me? Are you kidding? No frickin' way. I wouldn't set foot in that dump. That place is pathetic. Not even last night. Look, last night I was here till, like, dawn, and then I went straight home. I was exhausted. You try serving drinks all night in six-inch heels. Well, yeah, we were kind of close back then. And she really wanted to move back to Vegas. Her marriage to the Marine hit the rocks. She finally got smart and left the son of a bitch. And it's like I said, she wanted to come back here and make some money. She thought I could put in a good word for her with the management, and I did. Did she have any enemies? A jealous ex-boyfriend, maybe. Lynn? She was her own worst enemy. No, I mean, Lynn was a really cool person and all, but she wasn't always the most reliable person, if you know what I mean. Married? I really don't think so. I mean, she was still married to Buzzcut in Baghdad, and that was a total train wreck, so I can't really see her going all big love on me and taking home husband number two. No, not really, but, you know, if I remember something, I'll be sure to give you guys a call, okay? Good luck with everything. We appreciate you taking the time to answer our questions. There are probably plenty of prints on those poles, but they're not the ones we want. Let's try to narrow our search parameters as much as possible. We don't want to get swamped with useless prints. So where's the most likely area for Lynn to have danced for this fella? Right, now we might be getting somewhere. This palm print means someone was forced to sit on his hands last night. Now, from what I hear, that's not exactly the M.O. of a local dancer. Keep going. We have to check the whole chair. It's you, Brass. Somebody tried to use Lynn Bowder's credit card in an ATM off Eastern. Swing by my office when you get a chance. Okay, we're looking at a lot of prints in here, my friend. Finding a connection to Lynn Bowder might seem like we're looking for a needle in a haystack, but... You know, that's exactly what it is. Well, hell, that's why they pay us the big bucks, am I right? Let's try to narrow our search parameters as much as possible. We don't want to get swamped with useless prints. So where's the most likely area for Lynn to have danced for this fella?
Got one. Lots more chair to search, though. Another one? Great. All right. We've been over every inch of that chair. Watching your technique, I'm pretty sure we've found what there is to find. Hey. Yeah, one of the homicide detectives from Day Shift is having a retirement party tomorrow. I got saddled with picking up a gift from Night Shift. That's Lieutenant Briggs, right? Hasn't she been with the force for something like 35 years? Almost to the day. And when the first female African-American detective in the department retires, you better believe they're making a big deal out of it. There you are. Let me know what you find. Not too bad. Busy day. You know how it is. Let me know if you identify a suspect. <laughs> 